Hi, this is Stacy with Stalking Horse. Welcome to our channel. Going to talk to you guys today about the new E&M 2021 office visit guidelines. So we're actually going to do a three-part series. We're going to cut it up. We're going to have one video about the number and complexity of problems addressed, a second video or part two that's going to be about data, and then a third video or part three that's going to be about risk. And so we're going to give some tips and pointers on documentation and coding for each of those three areas. And also, don't forget that the AMA put out some technical corrections. Um, so make sure you check those out online. If you don't know where to go, go ahead and click the links on this page. One will take you to the AMA's page where it will give you the new updated guidelines with those technical corrections. And then another link will be there to take you to that AMA table, that grid, that chart that you really need to become familiar with to be successful with documenting and coding uh, with these new rules for office visits. All right, see you soon. Welcome to our channel. This is Stacy with Stalking Horse. So this is part two of our three-part series. Today we're going to focus on data to be reviewed and analyzed. So again, this is in reference to our 2021 ENM office visit guideline changes. If you haven't listened to part one, you may want to go back and take a look before listening to part two. We're just trying to go in order of the chart. So again, as mentioned before, uh, one of the biggest tips is making sure that you have your AMA table or chart here, print it out, laminated or in a folder. I keep it with me all the time so that I have it handy. Um, and so when we talk about data, this has actually been shockingly one of the most confusing elements with the new changes and the new updates. I think initially to everyone, it was like, oh great, this is gonna be easier. This is, this is gonna just be smooth. But actually, it's been pretty crazy especially if you're a consultant or an auditor that looks at many different practices and um, different health systems because you actually need to know certain things about how practice operates to apply the data element appropriately. So tip number one is get to know what's going on within the practice. And so what I mean by that is do they bill or do you bill for your own x-rays? Maybe you have a CT that you bill for. So if you're receiving credit for billing for those procedures, so a separately billable procedure, that's going to be excluded from your data calculation or your data within this table. So if you're already being compensated for it in another way, you are not going to factor that into your medical decision making. Now, with that being said, really our data doesn't start to heat up until a level three. Because for a level two visit, um, there's really minimal or no data required. So essentially you could maybe order one test and you're still at a level two, but anything higher than that, um, you're moving into level three. So data really starts to heat up in level three. And so there's a couple of things to mention about how it's broken up. So one thing is, is that there's different categories of data, right? So we have one category that houses like reviewing and ordering of tests. So that could be labs that you order or uh, ordering an x-ray. And also that includes reviewing external notes. So if you're a specialist and you review the PCP's notes, that's included in that category, category one. Then there's another category that is um, talking about uh, independent historians. So this is really important for any practices that see pediatric patients or geriatric patients really because in pediatrics, many times you need an independent historian, the parent, the guardian, to kind of give you a more complete history from what you'll be able to receive from the patient. Sometimes, obviously, because of their developmental stage, 
you're not going to be able to obtain any history. So you're going to need that independent historian, which does add some complexity. So making sure that if you're a provider that you're documenting that where you obtain the history, that's important because that right there, even if you don't order any testing, if you have to utilize an independent historian and you document it and it's appropriate, then that automatically pulls you to a three. So for, um, for data anyhow. So uh, it's important to note that if you're receiving any external information, so an independent historian information, you document that appropriately. Um, then there is also a category for independent interpretation of tests. And so we all know um, this happens a lot within certain specialties such as orthopedics where if you are unfortunate enough to go through an accident, suffer an inner, uh, injury, you may need to go in to see a specialist. You may bring an x-ray or an MRI or a CAT scan with you. And when you bring that, in particular, when you see an orthopedic, they normally want the imaging. And they make their own interpretation of what they see on that imaging. So again, if they receive no financial benefit from that test previously, so obviously if it's an outside test, uh, it's not going to have been performed in-house. So they would be able to receive credit for that independent interpretation of that image, right? So of course they have to document that. So again, if you're a provider, if you're a clinician watching this, making sure that you document your independent interpretation of an image or specimen is super important. And you also need to include details about what your interpretation was. Simply saying that you did it doesn't really make it so. You need to document what your interpretation is on that uh, test. So again, making sure you receive credit for that because that actually brings you down into moderate or level four for data. So by doing an independent interpretation, that again switches that level automatically to a, a moderate or for, for data. Also, um, one of the other categories is discussion. And really it's discussion around an interpretation of a test or around management of the patient. So it's important to document if you needed to have some sort of discussion with another healthcare professional or someone else with um, regard to a test or decision for uh, managing how you're gonna manage that patient, it's important to document that. Now there are certain acceptable sources and I would refer you back to the guidelines to review what those are. And yet again, if you don't have a copy of those, you can click the link in the description and you will have one link that will take you to those um, guidelines and then another link that will take you to this chart that we're talking about. So again, it's super important to document if you had any type of um, discussion uh, with someone outside from the patient and there are some acceptable sources and it truly does need to be a discussion. That's important to note as well. It can't be that you're going through an intermediary, that you're calling their office and talking to um, a medical assistant or the front office, the front desk person to kind of communicate back and forth. It does need to be a direct discussion between the two uh, parties and not, again, not something where it's relayed. And also it cannot be communication through progress notes. Because again, if you're reading a progress note, that goes back to category one and you know that data element is, is looked at differently. So it can't be communication through progress notes and it must be a discussion. So again, um, data has, has actually become one of the trickier elements, especially if you're part of a large group because you may not always know, even if you are the provider, how certain things are being billed. So kind of getting your, your arms wrapped around how things are being built and um, taking a look at your chart and your guidelines is really gonna help you to be successful with that data element. All right, so please, if you have any questions about data, feel free to comment in the box below. If you have any recommendations for a future topic, go ahead and also put those in the comments below. And we want to remind you to like and subscribe to our page so you don't miss out on any important content. Don't forget we have part three coming up. We're going to talk about risk. And also, don't forget that you heard it straight from the horse's mouth.